When it comes to product design on our graphics cards, one of the most challenging and exciting areas we face is thermal design. If you were to design a GPU card without a fan, without a cooling solution directly attached to it, the GPU would settle at around 760 degrees Celsius, which is about 100 degrees hotter than the melting point of aluminum. At the core of thermal engineering is the first law of thermodynamics. And the first law of thermodynamics states that energy cannot be created or destroyed within a closed system. In the context of the GPU, the graphics card can be considered as a closed system. So energy flows into the graphics card in the form of electrical energy. Inside the graphics processor itself, that energy is converted into heat, and that heat then flows out through the thermal solution. There are three modes of heat transfer that we use to get heat out of the GPU. There's thermal radiation, where heat is transferred from one higher temperature surface to another lower temperature surface. There's conduction, which is where heat is transported through a solid object or from one solid object to another solid object. And there's convection, where heat is transported from a solid object to a liquid or a gas. So how does energy transform into heat inside the GPU? That happens inside the transistors of the GPU, where it takes energy to make them switch on and off. That energy then is released as heat. That heat is then conducted up through the GPU and across the thermal interface material. There, it enters into the vapor chamber. When the heat enters the vapor chamber, it hits water inside where the water evaporates and then the air blowing across the fins removes the heat from the fins. Previous generations had a base plate that provided the mechanical structure for the PCB and for the heat sink. The problem is that this base plate was in a thermally critical area of the design. To achieve even more cooling performance, we have to move more air through the system. So to look at how to do this, we turn to computational fluid dynamics tools in order to simulate how the air flows through the system. In order to achieve this perfect airflow, we have to remove the constraints that we had before. We have to change the PCB. We have to move the fans. We need to change the software stack that's controlling the fans. As we move forward, we're taking a holistic approach because making a GPU isn't all about the thermal solution. It's about bringing all the pieces of the product together, considering thermal design, mechanical design, electrical design, with industrial design tying it all together to unleash the full potential of the GPU with an obsessive focus on keeping the system cool and quiet. Most of the disciplines got to have lofty dreams and come up with solutions. At the center of all of those teams is our mechanical engineers. The mechanical engineer's job is to take the dreams of all of the engineers in the team and to figure out how to pull that all together, turn it into something that we could not only design, but we could manufacture in high volume. The cooling solution is held to the PCB by springs. These springs historically are very tall, so we challenged our mechanical engineers to come up with a leaf spring design to keep the springs that hold the thermal solution to the GPU low profile enough that we could fit a back cover over them. Our mechanical engineers explore every possible way to attach the GPU cooling solution to the graphics card while not cracking the die. Every product we build is vigorously tested to high quality standards. So our mechanical engineers are constantly being challenged by our entire company to develop things that have never been developed before. When we come up with a new architecture, we have lofty dreams for performance. But one of the things we'd also like to do is be able to generate more performance by getting more power into the GPU. Whenever we talk about GPU performance, it all comes from the more power you give and you can dissipate, the more performance you get. The biggest challenge 
whenever you do a, a very high-end board and try to squeeze it in six to seven inches is uh, the power density becomes really 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 high whenever we talk about um, signal integrity the first thing that comes to mind is uh, crosstalk crosstalk is uh, the phenomenon where you have two wires that whenever they're very close to each other they start affecting each other so you can see part of the signal that is on one show up on the wire next to it this of course is bad because the information on one is seen on the wire next to it and that could corrupt the information sent on the other side. The challenge in our designs is because they're so compact, it's very, very difficult to give space between adjacent signals. The way to mitigate it is, of course, using more layers on the PCB and uh, have awesome layout engineers. One of the components that uh, we reduced the size significantly was uh, the power connector. And uh, we designed a new connector, which is smaller than the PCI Express connector, but actually end up carrying more power. Not too long ago, graphics cards were just a collection of FR4, a bunch of silicon, and a bunch of labels stuck on there to track the board, or show its compliance. One of the things our industrial designers wanted to do was to, of course, allow the thermal architecture we came up with to be realized, but they also wanted to find a way to get the design out of the way. I think it's very common to see where functional and mechanical aspect of the design being sacrificed or compromise in the name of aesthetic. This is kind of like a new for new sake approach, which I think it lacks the real purpose of the design. Designing a GPU that satisfies both mechanical and thermal world in a perfect harmony is not an easy thing to do. As a design team, we try to create products where experience, function, and form go hand in hand. I think one of the hardest challenges for industrial designers is that you should try not to look at what's been done before. As soon as you start looking at what's been done before, you just naturally become stuck with it. As a design team, before we start diving into conceptualization phase, we naturally gravitated towards this idea where really the thermal aspect of design is fully embraced. From that foundation, we were able to achieve this breakthrough thermal technology.